All right guys, so today I will show you a new config tutorial. But since config tutorials usually tend to be longer videos, I will use an artificial voice for this video. That allows me to save a lot of time and I don't have to scratch specific video parts to cut down the video duration. So maybe let me know how you like the voice or if I should do some adjustments to it. So today I will show you my Zim Apex configuration for Warzone 2. What I will also show you is how to handle the backpack menu and the parachute situation. For Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2, there are basically two best configuration setups. The first one uses 250Hz and is tailored around aim assist and the processing loop of the game. This is what I have shown you in my recent Modern Warfare 2 configuration video. And the other setup is a 1000Hz configuration, which is what I will show you today. Both configurations work extremely well in these two games, and you cannot go wrong with either of the two. However, what a lot of people don't like is to switch the polling rate, or configuration, each time you play a different game. It's just more convenient to use one polling rate for all games. So if you are someone who usually plays on 250Hz, then stick to my previous configuration video. And if you prefer 1000Hz, then today's configuration setup is for you. The backpack trick and parachute setup will of course work with both configurations, and the setup steps are also identical for both of them. So let's start with the first and most important adjustment, the in-game settings. In the bottom right corner of your configuration picture, you can find a small wrench button. If you press the yes button in the pop-up window, you will be forwarded to the Zim website. These are the settings your Zim expects you to use. Please do not use any other settings, or else the quality of your mouse movements will start to suffer. Settings that aren't listed here, can of course be customized to your personal preference. So go into your game settings now, and adjust all options until they match the values from the Zim website. Next adjust the polling rate of your Zim Apex. For that, you must go into the global settings of your Zim Manager. As I said in the beginning of the video, this will be a 1000 Hz configuration. So change the polling rate to 1000 Hz. If your mouse doesn't perform very well on 1000 Hz, then switch your Zim to 500 Hz instead. This will not affect the performance of this configuration, and only increase the aim assist a little bit. If you don't know what polling rate your mouse runs best with, then you can test it with one of the various polling rate checkers. I have linked one of them in the video description. Once you completed your polling rate changes, press the save button in the bottom right and restart your Zim Apex. Otherwise your polling rate changes won't become active. Next I will show you how to set up the HIP and ADS configuration. The setup values are the same for Xbox, PlayStation and PC. So it doesn't matter what platform you are playing on, just make sure that you pick the correct configuration profile. Start by clicking on the edit button in the top left corner. For the configuration color I have decided to use purple, and my hotkey is the F1 key. This allows me to load my Warzone 2 configuration whenever I want to, by pressing the F1 key on my keyboard. As a confirmation, my Zim will then show a purple LED light. Now let's swipe one more time to the right, to enter the HIP configuration. As always, adjust your synchronization settings first. When using 500, or 1000 Hz, then synchronization default performs the best in Warzone 2. It provides a good amount of aim assist, and the mouse movements are also extremely responsive and fluid. After that, adjust your hip sensitivity. I am using a sensitivity of 15. If you are unsure what sensitivity you should use, then you can watch my sensitivity tutorial to find your most optimal mouse sensitivity. It shows a method that pro players use to find their most optimal mouse sensitivity. You can find a link to it in the video description. When it comes to mouse DPI, Modern Warfare 2, and Warzone 2, share the same problem. On Xbox and PC, the aim assist makes use out of the higher stick resolution of the Xbox controller, whereas on PlayStation this doesn't exist. So the ideal amount of mouse DPI depends on the platform you are playing on. PlayStation users should play with lower DPI values to get a stronger and more consistent aim assist experience. I recommend values between 1600 
and 3200 DPI. And Xbox or PC players should use as much DPI as they can. Any value above 3200 or higher is perfect. Personally, I would choose 10,000 on Xbox and 1800 on PlayStation. Once you have adjusted your mouse DPI, you can continue with the advanced settings. Let's first go over boost and steady aim. As you can see, I use neither of the two. Boost will reduce the aim assist, which I do not really want to do. And steady aim can help with the aim assist bubble, but in Warzone 2 I do not really have any problems with that. Therefore, I keep both at zero. Smoothing on the other hand is helpful. Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2 have fairly poor micro movements. This can result in a little bit of stutter when doing micro movements with your mouse. Since that is bad for the aim assist, I added a smoothing value of 2. The original Modern Warfare, as well as the first Warzone had the same issue. A few months after the release, Activision fixed the stutter through an update, so maybe they will do the same with Warzone 2. Until then, I can recommend to use a little bit of smoothing. Now about the SAB feature. I would recommend to not use too much here. Warzone is basically a Call of Duty game, and these usually don't play very well with high SAB values. The aim assist will become too weird, and your strafing speed becomes very slow. Because of that, I use a value of 25. Now scroll down until you can see the button bindings. Here you can either copy my button layout that you can see right now, or you go with your own one. At the very bottom of your button bindings, you can find the option to switch into the secondary button bindings. Here you can bind every controller action a second time. I am using this to bind both L1 and R1 to the number 3 key on my keyboard. With that key I can then activate streaks, such as airstrikes, or drones, in the game. I have also bound my D-pad buttons to the arrow keys. Now swipe one more time to the right to enter the ADS configuration. Just like before, adjust your ZIM synchronization settings first. To keep the same mouse feeling, I recommend to use the same synchronization profile that you have picked in your hip configuration. That is why I use synchronization default again. After that, adjust your aim down sight sensitivity. My preferred aim down sight sensitivity is 21. As for the additional sensitivity settings, you can use the same values as in your hip configuration. So there is again no need for boost or steady aim. And smoothing is set to a value of 2 again. At the top, you can now take care of your delay values. When you press the ADS button, each weapon in Warzone 2 will slowly transition from the hip to the aim down sights mechanic. This happens during the scoping animation. And each weapon has a different transition time. If the duration of this transition doesn't match the one you use in your Zim configuration, then you can experience a short sensitivity spike when you press your aim down sights button. The default value of 224 is the average across all weapons in this game. This value will work quite well for most weapons. However, if you are playing with a weapon that still has a small sensitivity spike, then I recommend to change the value until it's gone again. For heavy weapons such as machine guns or sniper rifles, you will usually need higher values. And for very light weapons, for example submachine guns, you must use lower values. I will keep the value at 224 because I mainly play with assault rifles. Now about the SAB value. I recommend to use the same one as in the hip configuration. This is automatically done by your Zim when the inherit box at the top is ticked. But if you want to use a different value, then just untick the inherit box at the top and change the SAB option at the bottom. When I scroll down, you can see that the value is set to 25. Since I do not want to use an independent SAB value, I will tick the box again. Next I want to show you how to set up a sub configuration for the backpack menu. The backpack is used to rearrange your inventory and is navigated with the D-pad buttons. Because of that, you will need a sub configuration if you want to use the backpack in a more convenient way. So swipe one time to the right to enter a new sub configuration. I have already set it up in advance, but here are the required steps. 
First activate the sub configuration by pressing the enable button at the top. Then bind a button as the activation key which you haven't used yet. I will use the left shift key. Again, this is a button that I haven't used anywhere else yet. Next, expand the advanced settings under the activation key. Here you must set the delay to 50 milliseconds. Otherwise the setup can become inconsistent. Right below the delay value, you must add two deactivation keys. The first one is your crouch button. For me that is the left control key. And the second one is your ADS button. In my case that is the right mouse button. Both of these actions will close the backpack menu, so they must be bound as deactivation keys. Next scroll down to the sensitivity options, and open the advanced settings. Copy all your hip settings into this sub configuration now. For me that is a hip sensitivity of 15, a synchronization setting of default, and a smoothing value of 2. At last, untick the inherit box at the very top. You can now scroll down to the button bindings. Scroll down until you can see the D-pad bindings. There, you can now change the four D-pad buttons, with which you navigate the backpack. I prefer to use my mouse buttons for that. I have of course unbound their original actions, to avoid conflicts. You can use any buttons of your choice for these four D-pad buttons. The reason for why I use the mouse buttons, is that this allows me to still move, shoot and aim, while navigating the backpack. That makes me less of a target, and allows me to react to enemies. At last switch into the secondary button bindings. At the bottom you must now bind your normal backpack button to the D-pad again. For me that is the R key. If you activate this configuration too early, then this will not lock you out of opening the backpack. Let's go into the game, to show you how this works. When I have opened the backpack, I just press and hold my sub configuration key. My Zim will load the backpack configuration, and I can now navigate my backpack with my mouse buttons. Any direction is possible by pressing my mouse buttons. And moving my character is also possible while changing the backpack. I can even aim and shoot while navigating the backpack menu. That allows me to react to any possible situation. And when I close the backpack by either pressing the crouch or ADS button, then my Zim will automatically switch back into my normal configuration. Alternatively, I can also just release the sub configuration key. You can of course use this sub configuration for any other equipment menu as well, such as enemy backpacks or loot boxes. The concept is the same. Open the backpack, and then press and hold your sub configuration key, until you are done looting. Now in the last chapter, I want to show you how to set up a sub configuration that lets you handle the parachute, or skydiving interaction. As you probably already realized, the turn speed is really slow when using the parachute, or when skydiving. To solve that, swipe one more time to the right to enter a new sub configuration. Just like before, I have already set up the configuration in advance. So you can see the finished configuration now. First activate this sub configuration by pressing the enable button. Whenever you are in the air, or using a parachute, you will have to hold a button of your choice now to improve the turn speed. This has to be a button that you haven't bound to any other action yet. I have chosen the caps lock key for that. Again, this is a key that I haven't bound to anything else yet. After that, expand the advanced settings under the activation key. Set the delay value to 150 milliseconds. This will prevent accidental activations. Next you can scroll down and increase the sensitivity to 500. At last, untick the inherit box at the very top. You can now scroll down to the movement options, and expand the advanced settings. At the top, delete the left and right movement binding. So only the W and S bindings remain. Then, right below that, bind the A and D key to the left and right movement option. So W and S are bound to the left stick at the top, and A and D to the right stick at the bottom. If you did everything right, then your configuration should look like mine now. Let's go back into the game. The way this configuration works now is the following. When you are in the air, you can hold down your sub configuration key to boost the turn speed. 
I can now either turn with the mouse, or use my A and D key to make very fast turns to the side. So longer turns are done with the keyboard, and shorter ones with the mouse. And when I open my parachute, I can do the same. With my mouse I can make fine adjustments or check my surroundings. And when I want to make a longer turn, I can use my A and D key. This works for as long as I keep pressing my sub configuration key. And the moment I am about to land, I just release my sub configuration key. My Zim will then stop the parachute configuration and switch back into the normal one. You can of course use your parachute configuration for drones or other vehicles as well. Alternatively, create another sub configuration with other bindings if you prefer to control those vehicles with different button bindings. That was the last adjustment, your Warzone 2 configuration is now complete. You can now hit the save button in the top left and exit this configuration. As always, you can find the copy and paste code for the whole configuration in the video description. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button or maybe even subscribe to this channel to not miss out on any of the upcoming videos. Also, contrary to popular belief, this channel is not an official Zim channel. I run this channel in my free time to bring you guys the latest Zim news and tricks. So if you want to support what I do, then maybe consider to join the YouTube channel membership. Channel members usually get around 1-4 to four weeks of early access to all new videos. Plus, we also have a nice little Discord to discuss Zim settings and other stuff. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.